Kant's emphasis on human dignity has led him to be called the father of human rights, and his influence remains strong in modern Germany. The first article of the Constitution declares that human dignity shall be inviolable, never to be compromised. But what happens when respecting someone's dignity prevents us from acting to save an innocent life? Seit Wochen beschäftigt uns der grausame Mord an dem kleinen Jakob von Metzler aus Frankfurt am Main. In 2002, Jakob von Metzler, the 11-year-old son of a prominent German banking family, was kidnapped. A few days later, the police arrested Magnus Gafken after he had collected the ransom money. But he refused to say where his victim was hidden. The deputy police chief of Frankfurt told this uh, kidnapper that if he doesn't tell where, he, where the child is hidden, he would suffer uh, in a way that he cannot even imagine. He threatened he would, to torture. He threatened him with torture, exactly. The threat worked. Gafkin admitted that he had already killed the boy and hidden the body. He was given a life sentence for murder, but remarkably, the deputy police chief was also prosecuted and convicted of violating the kidnapper's rights. You're trying to yeah. save an innocent yeah. child, yeah. and here you have yeah. the criminal who kidnapped yeah. the him. Argu the argument against it is that there are some inherent qualities in a person that the person cannot forfeit even by doing the worst deeds uh, possible. According to Kantian ethics, uh, uh, you're not allowed to just use a person, uh, to just abuse him, to hurt him, to torture him, in order to get something out of him, even if the purpose of this was good. Because that's using a person as a means rather than respecting him as an end. Exactly. Even though he's a criminal. A even, though, even though it's a criminal, even though we think he didn't really act terribly, you know, he didn't really have much dignity uh, in his own actions, and why should you treat him, you know, with respect and dignity? Exactly. You are not allowed to treat a person as a means for another end. Now, here's what a utilitarian would say. A utilitarian would say, you've defended Kant on his categorical principle, but you've just shown what's morally absurd about the Kantian position. Within the utilitarian way of thinking about moral issues or moral cases, you cannot distinguish in the end anymore what kind of action is good and what kind of action is bad. It's, it's totally relative. In some instances, it's good to torture. In other instances, it's not good to torture. What about respect for human dignity? Well, again, I would say, what about respect for the dignity of the child? Right? I mean, here's a child who is locked up somewhere, um, going to die slowly from, from hunger and thirst. Um, there's no way that's a, a dignified thing to do to the child. As a utilitarian, I would say, if I know that I can save the child and I don't, then I'm responsible for that child's death. And, and that's what, in my view, Kantians refuse to acknowledge, their responsibility for the things that they don't do that could save lives. Now, in the German case, the kidnapping case, they were confident that they had identified the perpetrator. Let's assume that's the case, but the perpetrator still won't talk, even under torture. But he would talk if you tortured his 14-year-old daughter. Would you do it? I, th I mean, that would be much, a much harder case, you know, in, in an emotional level. I think to torture someone who is, you know has done something horrible is something that you can psychologically come at more easily than to torture somebody who's completely innocent. Um, so if it's simply the one-on-one -on -one case here, I would say no, um, because the child that you're torturing is just as innocent as the child who's dying. But if there are ten children who but are... But if you up the numbers, um, I suppose I'm going to come under a lot of pressure and um, perhaps I will say, I don't know if I could do it, but I, perhaps I would say, if you really knew that that was going to get the information to save the 10 children, then you would 
then, then the right thing to do would be to torture one to save ten. Even an innocent girl? She's innocent, but so are the ten innocent, of course. And it's a matter of numbers. And it's a matter of numbers in the end. As a war reporter, I have to say, you know, I, I can see, uh, I, I speak to people who were victims of this kind of thinking. Uh, you know, if you, if you talk to people who were tortured, badly tortured, exactly with that kind of argument, um, it, it, it's so evident why you need Kantian thinking as the guidance, per se, to stop people from thinking they could use others as a means. It's, it's for me, that's, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I see on it every single trip I make to whichever country, wherever I speak to people who, um, you know, were abused, who were tortured, who were mistreated, with such kind of argument that it's, it's full purpose. It, 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 there's a good end to this. There's a reason why we could torture people. It's devastating to see that. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, deep, I'm deeply convinced that Kantian thinking uh, is, is the best guidance we have to protect human rights. The von Metzler case prompted much debate over Germany's constitutional commitment to human dignity.